welcome to episode three of Reese's Random Reviews. I am Reese, and I'm about to give you a random review. Okay, has anyone seen Fargo? No, I'm not talking about the movie Fargo. I'm talking about the TV series Fargo. This one right here. That's right, the TV series Fargo, based off the actual film by the Coen brothers, but created by Noah Hawley instead. This TV series is absolutely fantastic. I think it was the best TV series of 2014. It was so critically acclaimed. It's got 98% on Rotten Tomatoes and it's even won so many awards. FX's Fargo is like a masterclass in storytelling, beautifully structured episodes, interesting character introductions, or even awesome deaths. Hidden callbacks, sweeping shots, cool visual transitions, and of course, tons of symbolism. But there's only one symbolism that only happens through the whole entire first of season one. And do you know what that is? Fish. That's right, there is nothing on this symbolism but loads of fish. 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 Fish! There's just nothing but fish! Even Noah Hawley, the creator of FX's Fargo, even said, the fish symbolise what they symbolise. That's basically what he was saying. But he also gave us a bit more stuff instead of being so secretive by saying, the presence of the fish, you know, in some ways, all the fish imagery builds from episode one until the fish fall from the sky in episode six. And there's no more fish imagery. You could think, I suppose, that all that imagery along the way was a foresha foreshadowing or set up to the fish fall. I think there's a real theme in a lot of Cohen's work, but especially in Fargo, which is civilization in the wilderness. The fact that in this region, specifically, you're living on the edge of the frozen tundra. Just this idea of running the wilderness imagery in the story to keep the idea alive. Makes sense. But how did the writers manage to layer it out throughout the whole season in so many obvious or in more obscure ways? I mean, that's the great thing about telling a story to complete a story and, br and breaking the whole thing ahead of time. Every opportunity, every episode, you're playing into a larger story and then your larger theme. Again, Hawley said that again. Marvellous. But now, despite the so many symbolism, there's actually 11 moments where Fargo talk about nothing but fish, or you can see symbolisms of fish. I, for one, saw loads of fish in season one, and I was just like, there are so many fish. What is going on? But now we're finally going to find out... Well, hopefully we're going to find out the answer. I can't really make any promises. But let's hope we can. And so, here is apparently 11... No, sorry... 12 of fish symbolisms. I'm just going to show you this first one right now because there's a bit of dialogue which does include fish which says eventually you just swallow your tongue and you die like a fish. That quote from Mr Numbers. He's one of the bad guys of Fargo. If you haven't seen the series don't watch this because you're just going to spoil it for yourself. Okay now here's the top 11 fish moments on Fargo. Okay, so first of all in Fargo, we see an inspirational fish poster. After Lester brutally murdered his wife, Pearl, in their basement in episode one, The Crocodile's Dilemma, splattering blood everywhere with his angry head hammering. His gaze went straight to an inspirational poster hanging on the wall, which says, what if you're right and they're wrong? The poster, with its adorably cartoonish school of fish, now covered in his dead wife's blood, suddenly became more of a delusional therapeutic mantra for Lester. Pearl had been wrong to question his manhood, so maybe he was right to murder her. It later covered up the spot where Lester chose to hide his handgun. Or hammer, because, you know, he never used a gun. Fish moment number two. Are fish considered as pets? Well, that's the first title. When Lord Malvo checked into Leroy's motor in, he was told it would be an extra $10 a night if he'd like to, like to keep a pet or a dog inside the hotel. But the first question he actually said was, what if I got a fish? That's right. And then he said, would it cost me $10 if I had a fish? Or what if I kept spiders or mice? Or even if I had bacteria? <laughs> Lord Malvo was so good with jokes. Fish moment number three. Signs of swordfish. There were even mentions of fish hidden away in unsubtitled sign language. Scenes in episode two, The Rooster Prince. There was a deaf character in Fargo called Mr. Wrench who symbolises many fish moments in his Psy language. It's actually quite clever how he does that. In fact, one of them was actually the bit where, using the Psy language without subtitling it for the audience, neither one could exactly say what he was saying. But we tried to find a real, real, but we tried to find a reliable answer, but apparently there was no avail. But apparently there was a joke where a swordfish came out, where Sam Hess apparently was dead, saying that he could have been on a boat, and all of a sudden a swordfish jumped out of the water and landed on the back of his head, stabbing him. 
It actually looks like it. Check it out. It does actually, judging by the picture, it actually looks like he's symbolising the swordfish stabbing his neck. You might want to check that out. Fish moment number four. A big mouth bass. Big mouth. While Molly Salverson, played by the beautiful Alison Tolman, was eager to investigate leads in the murder of her friend and chief police Vern, who was played by Sean Doyle, the new chief Bill, played by Bob Odenkirk, is that how you pronounce his name? Was more concerned with hanging his base on the wall of his new office. Centred, higher, incompetence, its finest. Yes, it's so perfect. Fish moment number five. A mesmerising screensaver. The very first death of the series in the pilot episode was given more screen time in episode 4, Eating the Blame. As the man, only really known as the Naked Man, that's how he was credited by, got a bit of a backstory, so we finally know exactly what happened to this guy. Before Malvo came into his workplace and dragged him off to stuff him in the trunk, Phil, apparently that was the Naked Man's name, must have been a daydreamer, as that fish screensaver was so mesmerising. It does look really nice when you look at it. Just loads of fish bubbling on his computer screen. It's so gorgeous. Fish moment number six. Ice fishing anyone? Oh yes please. While in town to track and kill people responsible for Sam Hess's murder, hired hitmen Mr. Wrench and Mr. Numbers hold up in an ice shack on the frozen lake. Guess that makes them one step ahead of Malvo as far as, a, as, far as not leaving a trail, but at least Malvo had a bed with cleanish seats at the motel. Fish moment number seven. Something's fishy. Speaking of wrench and numbers, their big scene had came in episode 4, Eating the Blame, and since it was just between them, the audience was finally clued into what they were signing, while they had what can only be described as a silent work lovers quarrel. All subtitled for our amusement, another mounted fish was hanging above their table. I can just see it there. Fish moment number 8. Bargain bin socks. When Lester stopped at Yuli's Sporting Goods, that's a good name for a shop, in a flashback in episode 5, The Six Ungrassables, he was drawn to a bargain bin of mismatched socks. The owner threw in a gun with the, with the sale because, of course, he could have... That gun later shot the good chief dead. Ugh. Wonder what he could do on a fishing pole. Ah! He's killed me! Fish moment number 9. Google Lawn Malvo. Gus, played by Colin Hanks, which actually is Tom Hanks' real son, no joke. Just take a look at the, uh, you know, the resemblance of these two. Father and son. They look so alike. His character is called Gus Grimley, and he was one day Googling about the idea of how to be a good detective in episode 5, involving asking his daughter Greta, played by Joey King, to Google the alias Lawn Malvo had given him. It's a congregation website, and on it was apparently a place called the Baldit Laker, whose logo is a fish being caught. Ah, I've been caught! Again, just so many fish there. Fish moment number 10. Fresh and delicious. Now this is one of my favourite fish moments, because for all the nods to fish and fishing, no one was actually eating any fish, until episode 6, Buridan's Ass. That's what it's called, Buridan's Ass. The episode opened on fish swimming and then panned to reveal that they were in a tank at a restaurant as one was caught with a net. It was then beaten, it was then beaten to death with a mallet. Hmm, pearl flashbacks anyone? Lester killing his wife with a hammer? Yeah, looks, looks similar to me. Scaled, gutted, dredged in flour, deep fried, covered in sauce and served to the head of the Fargo Syndicate at what was a seafood feast fit for hit men. Fish moment number 11 which is known as the final fish down. <laughs> Scales up. All the fish symbolism came to a dramatic, memorable and totally biblical end when it began raining fish. I can just imagine that in the song. It's raining fish. Hallelujah, it's raining fish. Oh look, there's one of them now. Seriously. While it was later revealed to be the act of a tornado that pulled the fish right out of the water, at the time it appeared to be the last in a long line of signs of God for grocery store King Stalvaro's Milos, who's played by Oliver Platt, all of which have been secretly manufactured by Malvo until this point. 
These flying fish were fierce, deadly, and truly an act more than just a clever hitman. So, the question is, why were these so many fish symbolising here? Well, in my theory, I've noticed that the fish always come when a character dies or is about to die. It's kind of like the big upcoming moment when the fish symbolism comes. And it's true. After episode 6, we actually don't see any more fish. It's kind of like the fish were only there for a big dramatic moment, then that's it, it's all over. And the fact that it says it's kind of like an act of God is really a sign that maybe the characters were there to symbolise that the fish were going to get there them sooner or later. I think the fish is there as well for many different reasons, and here's one of them. All the characters tend to do bad things at some wrong time, and then when something bad happens, there's a sort of a sign of fish coming nearby. Maybe it's a sign that they're going to get all caught, or maybe the net is closing in on all of them. You just don't know. Because it's basically saying every fish does get caught in the end, and soon you're going to get dredged, cooked, and baked in flour, deep fried, and covered in sauce. So, maybe that's the theory, we don't know. But who cares? But now that Fargo Season 2 is coming up, who knows what other symbolism is going to happen? Maybe they'll do symbolisms on chickens, or donkeys, or even a duck. You just never know. I'm Reese Manigan, and I've just given you a random review. But before you do go, please watch Fargo, because it is absolutely fucking brilliant. Okay, bye.